everyone, I'm Julia Schaefer and welcome to Farewell My Manicure TV. On this week's episode, when we get down and dirty in the garden, we look at the health benefits of growing oregano, the herb the Italians can't do without. And if you've been asked to put your feet up recently, we'll make it a lot easier when we go down to the shed and make our very own footstool from scratch. And right now I'd like to talk to you, particularly over the Christmas season, about recycling your waste paper and cardboard. Let's get started, shall we? With the advent of computers, we were meant to have a paperless office. Didn't really happen, did it? In fact, I reckon we create more waste paper nowadays because we have the option to print everything that comes across our desk or comes onto our computer screen. Well, I want to talk about paper and cardboard recycling to you today because it's a really important issue. Now, the first thing is obviously that we should try and reduce our consumption of paper. You know, in Australia, 1.9 million tonnes of paper and card is sent every year to landfill. And only about 50% of that cardboard and paper that we use is actually recycled, which is quite a shame. I know that at our office here, we keep a tray beside the printer so that if something comes through the printer or there's a duplicate or we get sent something in the mail that's got a blank on the other side, we put it in our recycle tray so that we can then use the other side for printing lists or timesheets or just printing something that has to be an inter-office um, piece of paper or document. It's a good way to reuse your paper if you, if you have that option. The big expendable in paper making and even recycling paper is our most precious resource, water. You know, if you recycle paper, if you're making recycled paper, you actually use 99% less water and 50% less energy than you would do if you were making paper from the original raw materials. So obviously recycled paper is definitely the way to go, but it still consumes a heck of a lot of water. Let's put paper in perspective. To create a tonne of paper, it uses 20 full grown trees. Now putting that in some sort of perspective, 17 full grown trees will actually absorb all the CO2 that your car emits during one year. It takes the carbon into the wood and it emits the clean oxygen into the air. Doesn't that put it in some sort of perspective? So it's important that we reduce our paper consumption. We reuse paper as we can and we recycle, recycle, recycle. And it's appropriate at this time of year because we've got Christmas wrapping paper and we've got Christmas cards. So they can all go in your recycling bin. If you're using eco-friendly paper with non-toxic dyes, then you can actually compost them or feed them to your worms. And often we do that with our paper here in the office is we'll shred it and put it in the worm farm or even in the chicken coop. So there's lots of ways that we can reduce, reuse and recycle paper and cardboard over this silly season. It's a frightfully hot day here today and I'm really looking forward to putting my feet up and having a good rest and a cup of tea. But before I can, I've got to make myself a footstool. So where do we begin? So I've got some off cuts of foam that I bought from um, Clark Rubber and I think this piece was $2 as it turns out. It's an odd shape so we need to get it cut. I'm going to take advantage of the size of it because I'm making it myself. I'm going to cut right along there to make it nice and rectangular. I have to shave a little bit off the end here because it's sweeping out a little bit. You know what? It's really easy to use a bread knife to do this cutting. So I've been upstairs and I've got the bread knife out of my cupboard and I'm going to use that now to trim off my piece of foam. So there we go. Don't be concerned if it's not absolutely perfect because we are going to make a cover for it and it will hide a multitude of sins. Now the next thing that we need to do is measure this size and cut a piece out of some board. I've got some plywood board over here, let's turn you around, that I'm going to measure, trace around my piece of foam and cut a board the right size using circular saw. So there you 
you go. The timber fits nicely on top of our piece of foam. Well, it's actually going to be underneath our piece of foam. But I'm just checking to see that the shape and size is correct. Now, one of the most expensive things about making a footstool from scratch is actually buying the turned legs and the leg attachment fittings from your hardware store. So I've decided not to go that way this time and actually to create some legs with some square timber that I had lying around. Just grab it. Here it is. It's been pre-painted with some sort of primer, but I'm probably going to paint the legs white to match what I'm going to put over the top. So now I'm going to create four legs of equal length, and I'm going to do that using the drop saw. I've drawn around where I want the legs to be and now I've put in the vise one of the legs so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I've actually done one to start with is line it up with the drawing and we're going to drill the holes first we want some significant screws to go through because we don't want it wiggling around and if people accidentally sit on it with their bottoms instead of their feet they want, we want it to be able to support their weight <laughs> So now we can put the first two screws in and then continue on for the next couple of legs. Perfect. So there we have it. Before I absolutely melt, I have finished putting the legs on. So now it's time to take this upstairs to the cool and create the top for our footstool. Okay, so I've come up from the shed, had a shower, got myself a little bit cooler, and now we're going to continue with the project. Also, it started raining outside, so it's a lot cooler than it was before. Okay, so what we need now is to cut some fabric to, um, firstly, to cover the base, we cut a piece that's exactly the same size as this. I've taken the legs off my little stool because I want to put the base cover down, and then the legs will go on top of that, and then you won't see all the ugliness of the timber, right? Beauty. So now what we need to do, well, what I've already done, is I've placed my foam cushion down and I've measured how far it was going to be to actually overlap the base. So I've allowed probably another five centimetres all the way around, apart from, you know, just the inside of covering the sides over the top by about five centimetres. Now, because we're going to cover the cushion including all of the foam, we need to create a box out of the fabric that's going to slip down over the top of the cushion. So in order to do that, we are going to have to use a sewing machine. So I hope you have one of those handy, but it's very, very simple. So if you have a look down here, I'll just tilt you down a little bit. What we need is to come out about a centimetre from the corner on each of the corners. And we're going to draw a straight line out from that to the end of the fabric and a straight line out from that to the end of the fabric. And then we're going to cut that section out. So then when we sew it up, these edges will meet each other and create a nice straight corner for our cushion. I hope that makes sense. So the centimetre out is going to be the distance that we're sewing. So this is what the fabric looks like now. See how I've cut out all of the corners? So now with right sides together, I'm going to join these pieces using my sewing machine and doing a one centimetre seam. All right, so then we turn it inside out, push out the edges, Let's go and fit it over our cushion. Might be a bit of a squeeze, but that's a good thing because it'll give it a bit more tension. Looking good. Oh 
Okay, there you go. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. So as in the very first episode of Farewell My Manicure TV when we introduced you to the staple gun, what we do is we staple down alternate corners so that we can create that tension and then we go ahead and finish the rest with adequate staples, you know, every couple of centimetres so that it looks all neat and tidy. We do a fancy fold at the corners too to make sure that they're neat. But look, it's all underneath, so secret squirrel. No one's going to really turn it upside and have a look at your workmanship. So there's no raw edges and tack it down, swing it around, give it some tension, fold it over so there's no raw edges. Tack it down. Okay, so I've tacked all around it now, allowing kind of a couple of centimetres in between um, the staples. So this is our finished article. What do you reckon? I'm pretty proud of it. What do you think? Anyway, I think it's going to be a great present for someone who really loves cow print and cows. I wonder who that's going to be that I'm going to give it to this year. Hmm, don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make the footstool. Really heaps cheaper than you can buy them in any sort of furniture shop. you just got to have some scrap timber lying around. Go to Clark Rubber and buy an off cut of foam. Find whatever fabric suits you or fits in with your um, decor and have a go at making one for yourself. It's really fun. lovely herb here is called oregano. It's the herb that pizzas and pastas can't live without and it's a terrific Mediterranean herb that grows really well in a warmer climate such as southeast Queensland. It's terrific too because it's a natural weed mat. It grows really dense and so it suppresses weeds from coming up from underneath it. It's a terrific thing to companion plant with beans and broccoli because it naturally repels the pests that are attracted to beans and broccoli so it's fantastic for that as well. Look it's got some terrific health properties too. It's high in vitamins A, C, E and K. It has lots of phytochemicals which have potential health benefits. It's an anti-inflammatory, an antifungal, an antioxidant. It helps with respiratory infections and it has been known to have some effects on some cancers. So it's a terrific herb to have growing in your backyard. It grows easily from seed or from cuttings and of course you can buy a fully grown plant in your garden centre. But if you've got a friend or a family member who's got some growing, just grab a cutting from them. The best time to harvest oregano is just before they go to flower because it's a more intense flavour in the plant at that time. So that's a fantastic plant for you to grow at home, a terrific addition to your herb garden. So I hope you go out and grow some oregano. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And join us on the website www.farewellmymanicure.com See you next time!